In Chinese tradition, the strength of water is its movement. In time, it can erode mountains. Water is written in Chinese as shui. In contrast to the movement of water, the strength of the surrounding rock is in its mass and solidity, providing the essence of a mountain at rest. The character for mountain is shan. Taken together, these two characters signify the idea of a landscape and symbolize to the Chinese the basic rhythm and harmony of life, movement and rest. Chinese artist Wu Shis Wang has spent much of his life working in Hong Kong. In addition to his private study and practice of landscape painting, he has served as museum curator, author of books on design, as well as being an art critic and teacher. Actually, uh, essentially the brush we use for Chinese painting is a writing tool. It, it is it's essentially no different from, say, and what we use for ordinary calligraphy, for general writing. So thus, we, we don't use the word paint uh, for painting. We, we, the, the Chinese character we use uh, for painting is very much the same character we use for writing. So uh, that's, in Mandarin, we, we call xie. That is exactly the same character as to write, you know. So we are writing a picture instead of painting a picture. In preparation for making a painting of Minnehaha Falls, Wu Shis Wang walks with a student of landscape painting, observing the course of the river and pointing out natural details that he will use later when composing the painting in his studio. In doing so, he is following centuries of a Chinese tradition, a tradition that not only values careful observation of nature, but also seeks to understand a hidden underlying structure. Something that will harmonize the visible and often contradictory details into a landscape painting. A painting that is a personal reflection on the spirit of nature. this then uh, sometimes it become ripples on, on this side hmm. it fans because when it hit this shore it is bent this way it's more foamy probably on this side so that would be the, the foot of uh, the, the fall. In contrast to the development of one-point perspective in Western painting, the Chinese landscape painter is free to follow the dictates of an internal understanding perhaps synthesizing a view from an imaginary point thousands of feet in the air, or showing how it might look from various angles and perspectives 
at different times. This is the, the structure of the wall, the cave or the shore or something, and how the river winds, that would be easy. The Chinese vision is to see it uh, with a much bigger eye. Everything would be diminished. Yeah. It's like uh, putting, constructing a model right here. So you got the rock here, then the waterfall, and how water comes through, you know. And that is the, in Chinese we call the Li, which means reason. The reason for everything, you know, the, the theory of nature. So once you know the structure, then you can always recompose. You know how trees would grow, how rocks are formed, you know. You get everything there. And you don't have to be an observer or at a specific point. Or because you will everything be is really all in the heart, you know. Yes. You don't have to be an observer right at a at this moment, at this point. Mm. That's why the, the composition that I've done were away from uh, what is in front of me. Before starting the painting based on Minnehaha Falls, Wuxius refers back to traditional works by ancient masters. In, in the ancient treatises, they were talking about of three steps. The first step is to, to learn from the masters to study their work and, and learn the plus work and how they uh, portray nature. Then the second step would be to observe directly from nature. Then in that way, then we can expand our vocabulary and develop new techniques for new forms. Then at the third step, then the, the heart is the master uh, for a painting. Then the artist would use the heart to guide the brush. And at that time, then, the artist will be the, the one who creates the style instead of following the styles of the, the engines, or to be too much bound by what is seen in front of him. For this particular painting, then, of course, is more of the second thing, which is uh, to base the composition directly on a particular spot which we can find in nature. For more than 4,000 years in China, artists have responded to the natural harmony of their landscape and have developed an approach to painting that is based upon not just what the artist sees, but also incorporates their philosophical ideas and state of mind into the creative process. Centuries of Buddhist, Confucian, and especially Taoist thought have shaped this approach leaving behind an unbroken tradition of principles to follow when painting a landscape. This tradition grew out of, and is still closely tied to, the literary arts of poetry, calligraphy, and scholarship. It is a tradition based upon a complex set of values that abstract the idea of a mountain landscape into a series of overlapping planes built with layers of textural lines. The artist usually de-emphasizes color and aims for a dynamic composition that values the inherent contrast of simple black ink on white paper. Ideally, when a person who is familiar with this tradition views the painting, their imagination might be sparked, allowing them to recreate their own experience of the landscape and mountain within themselves.
To a Western trained eye, these ancient landscape paintings may look like drawings, which in a sense is just what they are, paper or silk upon which ink is applied with a fluid and moving brush. But to the artist, these paintings were a chance to get beyond just surface appearances and were an effort to show how the landscape appeared within the mind. Each element in the painting, be it a mountain, tree, rock or waterfall, was carefully chosen and arranged according to the hidden reality behind everything. That intangible, unnameable something that could be only felt rather than perceived directly by the senses. We normally judge a Chinese painting in terms of uh, two things. That's really based on the six canons, in a way. Uh, the first thing would be the generous spirit of the uh, of the painting, and that's rather abstract, you know. Whether uh, it's something which you respond to intuitively, you know, you find everything is in harmony. There's also a feeling of uh, the person in the painting, the feeling of. Uh, Everything comes into harmony. The feeling of uh, a unique style uh, which works. That this is one thing I will be looking at, into when I look at the painting. The second thing would be looking into the brush work. That's more of a technical thing. First of all, whether brush work is relevant to the subject matter, whether the brushwork is uh, a sort of an integrated uh, thing, because there could be brushwork which may not integrate. An analogy can be made between the way an artist uses a brush stroke to convey a personal feeling, and the way an opera singer can use their unique voice to interpret the storyline in a performance. I was talking to a friend uh, some time ago on on this particular aspect. You know what what brush work is really is. Then he was speaking of uh, brush work is like the, the the sort of the song of a singer. So you, for a very good singer, then the, the song itself is is already the satisfying element. Whether you can listen, you can hear the, the individual words is another thing. So the brush work could be seen in this way, you know, the quality of the sound of a singer, or the quality of, of uh, the, uh, the 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 kind of shapes laid down on the paper, irrespective of the subject matter. So brush work uh, could be seen. Uh, on an abstract level like this, which means, you know, say you can see the inks working together, lines working together, uh, which uh, does have a, a kind of freshness and integral quality to it. And whether the brush work is also uh, embedded into the paper, has to be integrated, has to uh, give a feeling of freshness rather than slickness. In this particular painting, especially, you know, I have not put in as much foliage as uh, the actual scene should have in order to show the structure. And I also uh, 
try to see the whole scene from above, then it becomes unfamiliar altogether. For the trees, you know, they do not really reflect any particular place. Uh, these are put in uh, for rhythmic purposes rather than uh, describing the real scene. Because if I want to put the trees exactly the same as the, 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 the spot itself, then the, all this part would be covered up. And that would mean, you know, the whole painting could be quite cluttered, I think. For most people, you know, uh, seeing the painting, whether it really relates to the actual Minha Falls or not doesn't really matter. I, uh, what is important is that uh, how, Minha, uh, how I associate uh, Minha Falls in this painting uh, by using some of the characteristics. Uh, the Winding River, which uh, at a certain point, you know, drops into a space and then goes on and on. And that is the idea I start with. And of course, there are many falls and many rivers which could be seen the same way. So the painting is, uh, is something which can provoke uh, people's feelings of uh, similar experiences, uh, not necessarily the particular falls we, we are talking about. A few years ago, Wuxius Wang's own experience of traveling to China's legendary Mount Huang left a deep impression on him and resulted in this dramatic series of paintings entitled Mountain Thoughts. Completed over a year after his actual journey, these paintings are a visual document of a time when he looked deeply into nature. Immersing himself in contemplation of the changing weather and patterns of light in the mountain wilderness, he was able to eventually capture in ink on paper not only his impressions, but also an overall vision. Dreamlike in its quiet and luminous depth, In most cases, the painting is a state of mind. Although that uh, I always said uh, to people that in Chinese landscape painting, uh, it's, it's very rare we, we can we express, say, emotions uh, very clearly, because we don't express happiness, sadness, uh, dejection or something uh, in a landscape painting. But then the state of mind, you know, is always there. The state of mind is more abstract, and then uh, the state of mind is not just uh, the reflection of, uh, of your uh, immediate emotions, but also your aspirations, uh, your dreams. And I'm more of uh, uh, this kind. That means it's more of... Uh, aspirations and dreams rather than daily emotions. Daily emotions that when you're happy or not happy, you know, that's a daily emotion. That's very seldom expressed in a Chinese landscape painting. You don't show that. But you do show uh, what you really want to, to be and what you want to go and, and how to set your mind at rest or how to uh, develop uh, a, a different kind of vision for your mind to seek peace. That kind of thing is more uh, clearly reflected in Chinese landscape painting. It is perhaps in this series of paintings that the potential of Wuxius Wang's contribution to the tradition of Chinese landscape painting can be most clearly felt. The luminous voids in these works remind us of the dramatic lighting found in Rembrandt's paintings and the atmospheric effects of Turner, 
two artists greatly admired by Wuxius. The towering mountains, however, rhythmically offset with expanses of light-filled emptiness, relate back to the imposing landscapes painted in ancient China. Wuxia Swang's contemporary approach integrates these artistic concepts, resulting in landscapes that have the ability to draw one in, linking the imaginations of artist and viewer. Overall, these paintings capture a sense of the timelessness that goes to the very heart of the Chinese vision. Landscape represents nature, and nature is everything. There's a tendency for me to leave out a lot of, uh, say, manic elements in the landscape, because I want the landscape to be timeless. I very seldom introduce human presence or uh, man-made uh, architecture into the landscape, because that has a tendency uh, to make that particular painting uh, adherence to a particular time. I, I prefer a, a more of a timeless quality. Then I also want the landscape to be free from scale. So the presence of architecture or human being has a tendency to restrict the scale. Then you know how high the mountain is, how wide the river is. Then I, uh, if I exclude those, then that is completely open to the interpretation of the viewer. The journey itself has been covered in such a way that the bridge was part of the scene. So I thought that if I uh, do not have the bridge there, then that it may look even less removed from the actual scene. So I put the bridge because uh, at one time uh, we were walking along the bridge and uh, to observe the falls. So I put it there. Actually, in my belief, you know, the more you look at a painting, the more you can discover. That means, you know, in, in reading in the painting, you, you look at it in different ways, and each time could be a slightly different experience. You know, suppose if you read from the lower part upward, that would be different from 
looking mm -hmm. it from the, the upper part downwards, you know, it becomes a complete different journey altogether. Then this means uh, each uh, view of the picture would provide uh, a, a slightly different experience. And that means that a painting in that case can become something uh, which can provide infinite pressure to the viewer. A painting uh, could look finished to me at one point when it's red. When, when, when the painting uh, becomes dry, there could be certain elements which I may like to work on again. Then this means you know, I may need another uh, session of uh, painting. There could be also, you know, uh, when I look at the painting again in another, another day and I feel I may need further work. So, as a matter of fact, uh, there's really no end to a painting. Uh, because one mood changes from one day to the next. I tend to sort of um, say that painting is finished then uh, I would sign the painting and, and would do no further, you know. <laughs> but uh, if the painting is still there, you know, there's always the, uh, the temptation of uh, adding a line or a dot to it. I think all, all artists would, would do the same way, naturally. <laughs> 